Hello everyone, so today we're changing out the shims or the pads on the shims on the sprayer. Um, so we're just gonna go over how to do that. Got Dad and Easton both helping today. Um, so I'll just turn the camera on and show everyone. So the first thing you do is, you know, jack it up. This is the jack Dad made for us years ago. Um, you see it's on the 4830, even for the 4720, but works good now. So first thing you do is spread out your tires, jack it up. I spread them out as far as they pretty much go, about 150 inches. And then you just take out, I'll show you on the other side first. So this is what it looks like before you take them off. So it's got those three bolts on the front, back, and the front. And then it has that little shim on the side. So you go ahead and you just unbolt them there. And then what I like to do is I get the forklift and you just lift it up, the wheel up, until those get loose and they'll pull right out. Usually I get a set of like needle nose pliers and I can grab you know, the edge right here and just pull it out. And you know, you really want to uh, make sure you lift it up with the forklift. Otherwise, you know, that thing will tilt because you got all the weight of the tire when you're pushed out and it'll just kind of pinch the end of it. And so you kind of get that forklift and you just lift it up. We've tried using a floor jack or just prying it up and that just doesn't seem to do it. I just get the forklift and you can just move it a little here and a little there. Um, that seems to help a lot to get it out. Now I'll kind of show you what they look like once we pull them out. So the worn ones kind of look like this. Um, I don't have any in the garbage right now to show you. The front ones were all cracked. The back ones usually don't wear out as fast. And so you just have these little old push rivets. They're plastic. So what I like to do is I just flip it over. I find something that fits perfectly in this hole. And I just push them out. And they'll pop out and then you can pull this off. And then you just put a new one on. Here's a new one. And just put in a new little rivet thing. Um, I think it's about seven bucks for one of these. And if the plastic, if this metal part breaks, it's about $400. We actually broke one this year. Um, kind of cracked. And anyways, um, these shims are pretty important. To keep it so you can do your hydraulic adjust, move in and out. Um, if you get it too tight, it won't move in or out. If they wear out or metal's grinding on metal, they just don't want to move very good. So it's important to change these every year. In a minute, I'll show you how to tighten them down. Make sure you get them to the right tightness, I guess. So Easton's here finishing it up. So you put the shins back in, change the pads on the shins and put them back in. And then we came in. First thing you want to do is put this side in. Just put both, both shims in and then tighten this side first. And then you finish on the other side where it's got these little, um, little small, oh, what would you call them? Nut, I guess. Um, so you want to do, you want to make sure you keep them all even the same size so you know that pad is even so what i like to do is i i back these off just a little before i take them out these smaller washers or nuts and so then when i tighten it back i get them to about where they were so then i always keep it about the same size with the new pad um so then when i'm done when i get them all snug you know you just kind of work your way out and then once you get this one tight this one will be loose again so you got to get them all kind of even and you just kind of work your way back and forth. So they're all tight and snug. Um, you don't want to get them too tight or else this has a hard time moving in and out. But get them snug. And then I tighten up these ones. And then I kind of count the threads. Just make sure it's got about the same thread count on each of them. And then you know you have it even. And your, your, your axle here isn't going to be you know tilted one way or the other. It'll be even. And yeah, that's how we... Do it on the shims. Um, now we're gonna have Easton here back out the forklift and we'll, should be good to go. That should be pretty much it. Um, pretty easy job, just do it once a year. Make sure none of those pads are broken. Um, yep, that'll be it. 
That's one more sprayer tip for the day. <laughs>up the shims um on the very last one we accidentally cross threaded it so we had to go get a new one from john deere last night and finally put on this morning um there's two last things i wanted to point out that are good things to watch so i'll flip the camera around and show that so first is you got to make sure you have a gap on both sides i think the book says to have a five millimeter gap on both sides and you just want to do that so it's not you know this as this moves in and out, it's not ever rubbing here. Um, and then another thing you can do is since, you know, if I scoot back, I mean, obviously your weight of the sprayer is right here. And and so, you know, you're, you're gonna kinda, axle's gonna tilt like this, and so it will always wear more right here than over here. Um, so when you, if you don't wanna buy shims, new pads every time, you can just swap this side and this side and then it'll wear on the opposite side um that's one thing we've done in years past but that's eh, cheap we just replace them now um and then the last thing i wanted to show something we've done that makes it easier to pull those out because sometimes it could be a pain is um oh, come on. is just kind of weld a little nut here um, and then it's just something you can grab with pliers or you can thread a bolt in. Um, you can thread a bolt in and pull it out. Just gives you something to grab onto. Makes it a little easier. Um, but those are our tips. Um, hopefully they're useful for you. And I can use this for myself so I can remember next time what we did and worked.